Let's just do a quick walkthrough while we have a couple of minutes here. I want to really get down low as, as low as I can, um, to kind of give you guys an idea of how this park is. So you see here on the right here, we have our kind of adult dive fencing for Shockwave. You can keep walking there along down here. See a little concession stand for our nightly fireworks thing and our shrimp shack, including interior here. We do have a small interior for our things. Uh, we do have some souvenir cups, advertisements, as well as menus. Uh, these are actually things. They actually do have prices and everything. Uh, that that was a fun thing to do. And then, fair enough, you want to probably come and eat here. Well, if you pop outside here, we do have our condiment bar, as well as another serving area over here as well. Right next to the lake to get a nice view of the lake. You know what? Let's even set the park in motion so you guys can see how the guests interact with everything. Then we have Thunder Alley right here, our little go-kart track here at the Lakeside Speedway. You can see the carts going around here. Looks pretty good. We've got the control tower down on the far left-hand side here. We've got a little bit of the backstage area and some advertisement for our different stuff in our park here. We'll go ahead and back out of here. We'll head back up this way here. Come across the planters we actually made in some earlier streams here that look very nice. Um, we actually can walk up the hill here and see our beautiful flower clock that we just made and some of the curbing along the path here. I think we do need to add some more bushes, especially along the fence here and things like that, just to help tidy it up. But so far, I think it looks really nice. Uh, we can actually come up this way. If it doesn't clip through the path, it did a little bit, but uh, that's okay. We can fix that. Uh, we can actually walk along here. You can see the line for Shockwave is immense right now. I'm still trying to figure out what in the world's causing those circles. I have no idea. They're kind of driving me a little bit bonkers on what they are, but oh well. Uh, you can see here we're walking into the 80s plaza now, and we actually can see the shockwave sign that looks fantastic. You can see the safety guides there as well. Keep moving along here. The Exodus shockwaves here. If you remember a couple streams ago, we actually did this little patio area here. Uh, it's kind of a nice relaxing spot for people who may not want to go on shockwave, but, you know, they're waiting on family members or friends. It's a great place to sit and relax and enjoy the day still. Come over here to our nice uh, generic bathroom as we've uh, explained a little bit on how that works out. Um, it looks pretty good even with these older fountain here. I think it still looks pretty nice. And we have discus down here. We don't come down here very often. But you can see the backstage area. We do have a quite a few, a little bit, of, quite a bit of activity back there. This is actually, this this was really a popular ride. But now it's kind of recently, it's kind of, kind of died down for some other rides in the park here. Uh, but it still looks really nice. We have our backstage entrance here with our new gate that's, uh, that's it looks a lot newer than the other one because somebody accidentally took it out. It does happen. We do have our bumper cars here on the left-hand side of the path here and the path that wraps around towards Thunder Falls. We can walk along this way here. Uh, this is the other side of that patio here. And here is our Irish pub and the entrance to it. One of our big eating areas over here. Looks really nice, I think. We have a little bit of our uh, mulch area over here, along with our cart uh, selling some gulpy drinks and some cotton candy as well, and some ice cream ice cream treats as well in the back. Looks very nice. Continue walking around here. This is the back alley of our Irish pub where our live band does play a couple times a day, as well as our full-service bar back here as well. So it looks pretty good. Well, quite a few things to sell there. Well, it looks our, like our bartenders are a bit bored at the moment. But that is okay, because we'll keep on moving on this way. We'll head, actually, uh, enter around the corner to our firehouse mercantile. You can see here it's a fully interiored uh, shop in here. Nice drop ceiling as well. Uh, this took us quite a while to get done, but I do quite like how that looks. We can actually head back down into more of the, the older or the newer section of the 80s parts of the late 80s. We actually do get to Thunder Falls here. Um, one of our, you know, this one took four or five streams to do, but I, I think it looks really nice. Uh, we do have some, some more generic rides over here that we probably should put some signs up for, um, which we really do need to put some signs up for. Uh, but we do have a break dance, we do have a top spin ride, and we do have a Gravitron as well down here on the end as, as well. So, and then we also have our last little gulpy cart down here just on the corner. As we come back down around this here, it's a nice little retaining wall and our backstage area from our go-karts 
to do, do a lot of this. I did show this off the beginning of the stream, but I figured I'd show it off again, guys. And really, guys, that is going to do it for me today. Uh, I think our 80 section has turned out pretty well. It does need a few more plants and some spots. It does need a few signs for the rides as well. But I think overall, I can't even get a full camera right now. There we go. So that... Well, we got a hitch on one guy. Well, we got through the fight, however. We're picking up a very faint radio signal emanating not far from your current position. I think it's a homing beacon of some kind. Baha says I... it's pinging the victor. My father's victor? That's right. Baha was lucky to even notice it on his diagnostic display. I've marked the location. I suggest you investigate. I, I don't think we're going to be able to beat this one right now. I mean, fair, fair enough. We beat that fight. So it can be done. However. Heading to location. See if maybe I can do the same thing over here. Because there's going to be another dropship with the Annihilator on it. Um, and that's what we're going to have to focus on, I think. Trigger something here for me. Commander, there we I have go. Another on quick approach. Be alert. You don't know when to aim or when to reload, do you, Hamilton? You put me in a trouble for a lifetime. Today, the day comes to our world of being stopped. You ordered the death of my father. You're not leaving this place alive, Yamada. We'll see about that. Okay, so. On the move, following you. They should have just dropped those mechs off. Now, fair enough. The only one we really have to worry about is Yamada himself, because he's dry potting that annihilator. However, alright. That's what I was kinda hoping for is some of the lighter mechs come for us first because that once again we all know the annihilator is one of the slowest mechs out there Following the commander. so if we just keep backing up hopefully his annihilator cannot keep up with his, his light mechs and that we can take him out pretty simply hopefully I mean, it's... well that uh, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. that didn't work out as well as I thought it would That's, this is what I'm concerned about, is having a bunch of light mechs on me, by myself. I can do full throttle this way and torso twist, see if I can keep hitting them. Alright, there's the Annihilator. So it, it has cut up a little bit. There's a flea. Is a fire starter. I'm gonna walk onto it. Not really. All right. So I can take out one of these mechs here. Yep. I'm running low on AC20 ammo, and that's kind of the problem.
hit him in the center torso with that AC-20 shot, so maybe that'll uh, cause a bit of harm there. Alright, there's one down. Probably isn't the smartest idea in the world. Let's just not run forward, but let's try to take out this case, guys, as quick as we can here. Yep. What do I have left? For right now, it's, I ran out of L or SRM 20 or SRM ammo. What I'm out of now. All right, there's one fleet gone. more missiles into this flea. Oh, maybe not. Well, I'm missing both arms. I've got two shots of AC-20 left, and I've got a couple of missiles. That's about it right now. That flea keeps jumping around on me, so I'm going to back up, see if maybe I can draw him out here a little bit more. And that didn't work out well. Pretty much my only shot right now, if I can take out this flea, is when I get to the Annihilator, I'm going to catch it off guard and try to hit in the tw head twice with the AC-20. That's about what, that's my, uh, that's the only way I can think of beating this right this second. I thought, but uh, only four AC 10s though, so it's not the LBX that I'm worried about. Come on, Flea, wh what are you doing? I gave him a clear path over to me. He's not coming over here. There he is. You can do it. You can figure it out. New target acquired. Right, here comes the Annihilator, which is not what I wanted to see, but alright. This is not probably going to end well for me. I'll be honest. We can find this the flea over here. Aha, there he is. Got him back down here. It's kind of what I wanted. But uh Alright, there's one leg gone of his. Second one's going to go down here in a second here, hopefully. I had to use one of the AC-20 shots to get rid of the flea. 
All right. Oh, it's going critical. Okay, we're good. All right. Well, here we go. There was the. Uh, there was my one shot there. There we go. Ah, dang it. We just had the annihilator left. That was it. 